Welcome to today's episode of the Working Wisdom Podcast Series, brought to you by the C.T. Bauer College of Business at the University of Houston. We're having a conversation about work-life balance, how to navigate and overcome challenges within your career, and how to make business more accommodating to a diverse workforce. Well, hey there, everyone. Uh, My name is Giovanni Rosselli. I'm the Director of Alumni Relations here at the Bauer College of Business at the University of Houston. Hello, my name is Alejandro Sanoja. I am from Venezuela. I graduated from the MBA program at Bauer during 2017, and I'm currently the founder and digital strategist of Latin Presarios. All right, well, Alejandro, welcome to uh, the Working Wisdom Podcast, as you know, and we've uh, kind of debriefed a couple of weeks ago in advance of this episode. Um, We have about two episodes per semester where I get to um, take advantage of the real estate and bring in a fantastic Bauer alum. And you also know that there's thousands upon thousands of living Bauer alumni out there doing great things. So um, mm-hmm. coveted position, no pressure, uh, but we definitely wanted to have a conversation with you about your background and um, how you've really turned your education at Bauer into something um, great and um, life-changing. So. Why don't you briefly tell us a little bit more about yourself um, coming to Houston from Venezuela? What was the impetus for that and um, kind of how you've parlayed your time at Bauer into what you're doing today? Well, thank you for having me, Giovanni. And I think it's great what you're doing here because we do are learning from people out there from Bauer that are doing great things. I had the chance to listen to your previous interview and talking about Venezuela and my past, something we, we had in similarity with Major General Barry Price is that I also was a struggling student when I was in undergrad. So like I said, I come from Venezuela and, and back there, I, I wasn't a really good student. I almost dropped out of college and Bauer, I say that Bauer is the place where magic happens because it, it is, it, it completely changed my career and my trajectory and it's interesting because we just recently had some difficult situations here in Houston right and and in the moment it's painful but later on you can always point to those moments as the moments where you probably grow the the most and I was just having a conversation about that with my mom that unfortunately she lost the majority or all of her savings with the Stanford Bank scandal. In Venezuela, we don't have hard currency, so we would look for ways to save money in in good currencies. And of course, it's difficult to open an account in dollars, so she found this opportunity with Stanford Bank that was offering great uh, terms. And of course, we all know what happened. And at the moment, of course, it was very painful, but we were just talking about it recently and saying, like Steve Jobs said, you can only connect the dots looking backward. And I was saying, you know, mom, maybe that was one of the best things that happened to us. Because look at us, we're here, we're happy. And if it was not because you had lost all your money, maybe I wouldn't, I wouldn't have worked that hard during my time at Bauer. So I started at Bauer not really knowing much. It's interesting that I learned a lot about the process later on and during the program because I joined the Bauer Ambassadors. But before I had no idea what, maybe a little bit of idea what an MBA was and the process, but that was about it. I just decided this is a, I looked into the Cougar Investment Fund. I like finance. I had family in Houston. This has been a a city that I've been visiting for a while. It's been a a city that's done great for Venezuelans. The first NBA player played for the Houston Rockets, Carl Herrera, who won I think a couple of rings when the Houston uh, Rockets won some rings. Uh, Altuve, of course, with the with the Astros. Um, so that's why I picked Bauer. And then while I was in the program, I just did everything that anybody told me to do. I had this great friend, Matt Avery, and peer and mentor. He's basically everything. He was one year ahead of me. And he did great in the program. And he just guided me through, hey, you got to join the Bauer and be ambassadors. You got to take on leadership positions. And this was all new to me. There's not a lot of that in Venezuela. And if there was, I didn't know about it because I was an uninvolved student. So, um, and we can go deeper into any of these topics, but I basically took on any opportunity 
that was available during the program because of this pressure, right? I knew that we didn't have any other option. Going back to Venezuela, just a little bit of context. Ricardo Hausman did a talk recently here in Houston about what happened there. And no economist can explain what happened in that country because we've had upwards of 1 million percent inflation. And, and I know that sounds crazy. It basically means that prices are going up every second of everything. And then, so that's one number that I think it's a record. The second record, I think, is we've had the biggest migration in the history of the continent. Upwards, I think, of 20% of the population has left and it's still leaving to anywhere in the world where they can go. And then the third number, I think to date it's up to 60% of GDP drop, which is something that I think the biggest is or was 30% before that. And it was usually a country where either a war or a big uh, nature accident happened. And none of those happened in Venezuela. So people can't explain what happened there. So that's what was happening back home in Venezuela. And then, of course, for me, I always joke, and this is going to date me, but I joke that when I come to the Bauer MBA program, for me, life was like that Mario Bros level where, where the screen would move and you just had to go forward because if not, it was going to push you. I just had to keep going on uh, full stream with anything, any opportunity. I remember the exams, I would study hard and, and I, I just became this new person that understood that this educational opportunity was what I was needed to get to the next point or a point of success in, in my life. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, no, that's, um, that's quite a, a story arc and I appreciate you mm -hmm. sharing that. And um, what I love about Bauer is you know, that, that is a very unique story, but I would say everyone has a unique story that, that comes to our college. And um, mm -hmm. a lot of them have those big, those big story arcs where um, they came in um, with one situation and they've been able to kind of really get involved while they were a student. And then it propels them forward once they leave the university. So that's, that's really great to hear. Um, you touched on a few things um, on a global scale that I want to return back to, but um, for the time being, maybe we can focus a little bit more on um, kind of your your peer encouragement to to get involved while you were a student. Um, did you did you have any strategy in terms of how you picked investing your time in Cougar Investment Fund and Bauer Ambassadors, or was it really this approach of just kind of a dartboard? And you know, let me throw a dart here and see see if it sticks, and if it doesn't, I'll try something else. Or um, was it all kind of curated experiences leading towards something you wanted to do after you graduated? That's a good point. I, I wouldn't recommend my strategy to anyone <laughs> out there because uh, he was basically all in into what was going on in the school. I, I remember that I would tell people, join something in a leadership position, a club, the, the uh, a student board or something just so, just so you get the feel of it. And then the rest join as a member. I remember I did all of the clubs. I would go to all of the meetings as a member of the club. Uh, I did have a strategy in the sense that I wanted to do consulting. So I joined the consulting, the Power MBA Consulting Club. That was my main uh, organization that I was part of. And then the, the other strategy was just following what Matt Avery was doing. He was doing great in the program. We had an opportunity to do um, work with the associate dean at the time, Steve Koch. We did a research study. If I remember correctly, it was, it's, it was named Giving Power to Bauer. And it was about doing research and understanding what makes a good MBA program, what makes them, what are the variables that make them rank well within the United States and then within Texas and then understanding, okay, what are we, where can we improve? So that allowed me to work with him, with Matt and, and learn a little bit more about him. And I, then I learned that he was doing really great. He knew he was very involved. And basically after that, it was just um, anything that he would recommend me to do. I would just 
at some point I, I even asked him like, do I have time for this? Because the, they invited me to the Bar MBA ambassador program. I was like, that sounds like a lot. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of full right now. It's like, no, you, you can do it. Just you'll find the time. And I think those two years or, or anybody going through graduate school, I think it's a good time to do a sprint. I don't think anybody can maintain those levels. Even now to this day that we have a team at the company, I'm not even doing half of what I was doing at that time. It's just a two year sprint where you just focus all your energy on the program and, and try to make the most out of it. Cause it is, it's a, basically a tree, a career tree or a life tree in, in many cases that you're planting. In my case, I even met my wife through a friend from Bauer. So basically Bauer touches all the areas, my friends, my business, my family, Everything in my life is, is touched by, by the school. But it was a two-year sprint, and I would recommend people to make the most out of it because you're not going to have the time again. You're not going to have the excuse or the opportunities to, to work with, with as many professionals. Later on, it's going to be hard to join a course and be as involved. So I think that is the time to do it. And, and a funny story about that is that, well, I used to, do a lot of things before like watch basketball and I was all over the NBA and I remember during those times I had no idea who was MVP or what was going on or you just gotta prioritize right there's only 24 hours in a day but I remember uh, I was so focused on just anything related to the program or school or career related that sometimes some at some point somebody asked me about spring break Hey, what are you doing for spring break? And in my head, I'm like, spring break? When? What's that? When's that happening? Oh, the, in two weeks, like we have a week off, and I'm a week off. Like in two weeks, we have this event, we have this uh, career that's a uh, career fair that's going on, and these other three things that are happening. Like my calendar is booked all throughout the year of things that that are happening. So um, it was just interesting that my I don't know if you've seen that that video that I think it's a, it's a psychological experiment where they have basketball players and they ask you to count the passes. So you're so focused on watching the, the, the people on the court and passing the ball, and then you give your number and then they, they show you the video again. And there was a guy in a panda suit going mm -hmm. behind them and you wouldn't notice mm -hmm. because you're so focused on, on, on the thing that you, that you were tasked with. So I think it was the same for me during those two years. It was just University of Houston, Bauer, anything else is noise. So just focus on this and, and get it done. Right. No, that's right. I, I think you, you raise a good point. Um, and I'm current, currently in graduate school, as you know, and we studied that, that phenomenon, uh, that specific case. I, I think it was a gorilla instead of a panda, the video that I watched. But mm -hmm. even when I knew that it was coming, I still had a hard time seeing it because I focused on counting the passes that the players were making to each other. So it's, it's interesting. Correct. Um, no, I mean, you, you raise a good point that, um, you know, whether it's undergrad or graduate work, it's, it's but a season in life. And mm -hmm. it may seem like a lot and it may seem lengthy when you're in it, but it's but a blip on mm -hmm. life's radar. And you really have to take advantage of, of the time um, that you have here. And it sounds like you did that. I'd love to, at this point, kind of segue into um, once you crossed the graduation stage and you became an alumnus of the University of Houston and the Bauer College of Business. Um, I would imagine that someone like you who is as involved as a student would find it really difficult um, and kind of disheartening to cut the relationship off cold turkey. Mm -hmm. And I'm here to make sure that alumni don't, don't get in the habit of doing that, right? So can you kind of give give the alumni listening to this episode um, maybe some encouragement and some concrete ways to to not let that happen how did you stay involved once you left campus well i think there's a selfless way to do it and a selfish way to do it and both are valid and i think you should use both as motivation to do it the selfish is of course the leaders of tomorrow and the leaders of Houston are there in that school. 
we've been climbing the rankings and, and I often joke that or say that it's not a joke anymore. It's becoming reality that Bauer is kind of Amazon when it was starting, that everybody joked about it and nobody believed in it or any other Netflix. It was the same, right? When it's a startup, when it's beginning, nobody it thinks it's as good as the other or as good as it's going to be. And it's an investment that you're um, getting um, on a low price and it's going up. And lately that's what's been happening. All the different programs have been going up in rankings. Um, the Wall Center, the PES program in, in some of the uh, in, in graduate programs as a whole are also climbing the rankings. So the selfish part is you just got to stay in touch because the leaders of tomorrow are there and you have an opportunity to meet them while they're a student, while they're more open. Maybe you can give back to them and that creates a relationship and you plant that seed for the future when that person is in another position, you're going to have an in. Something that it's going to cut the noise and you're going to be able to get in touch with that person. So of course, that's kind of like the selfish way to think about it. And, and I think everybody should be doing it whatever you're doing right if you want if you want it to find a job and make it easier to do that in the future build your relationships with the school and the alumni population if you want to get clients if you're in a sales position or in a business position get in touch with the alumni population i'm sure you're going to find a lot of clients there and then on the selfless part it's just at least in my case it was a a place that gave me so much. And I remember even at the end of the program, without knowing that it was going to happen, I even got some scholarship that it seemed like they came from heaven and just dropped on top of me. And it was something totally unexpected that at the moment it, it helped me a lot. So I think just on that area, just coming back and giving to a place that gave you so much for whatever reason, if you believe in God, if you believe in, in quantum physics and energy and whatever you want to believe, I think in, in any area of life, it's important to do good and, and stay connected to those places that have given you so much. So I think of as far as home, now my wife is back. She's doing a, a graduate program. So the, the connection basically never ends. And I do stay in touch by... So we go once a year, Matt Avery, who also graduated one year ahead in the MBA program. We go back once a year to the Cougar Fund to share a, a guest lecture named Pitching in 3D, which is about designing, decluttering, and delivering your stock pitches. It's complicated information, EBITDA numbers, regressions, and that's a little bit boring. It's easier to share a story about information you found and get people interested to make an investment in that opportunity mm -hmm. so we go over that and um and we have a great time we've been doing it i think now for four or five years and then i'm, I'm losing my count with everything that's been going on it feels like we lived like a year in a week right with with everything that's been going on covid and cold and then i also my great friend um, who's now uh, Professor Charlie Becker, he and, and Dr. K are doing a great job with the SHORT program. And I also, I was part of the SHORT program while I was at Bauer. And I always try to find some time during the year to go back either to be a judge at a pitch competition, to give some type of marketing guest lecture or just to stay actively involved in, in anything that they're doing. So I would say those are the two main ways I stay involved, but I also, any other Cougar Fun event or like like we did, right? I, we got in touch because I got in touch with Sam who was at the executive MBA while I was uh, doing the MBA program. And he invited us to an event we met there. And it's just finding those opportunities to connect with people who you know are doing either great things or great things for the schools and just make some time in the calendar to get in touch and, and see what can happen. Mm -hmm. No, that's right. You hit the nail on the head. And I, you know, while I do like your, your terms of 
selfish reasons and selfless reasons. I love, I'm a fan of alliteration. So the two S's, mm-hmm. I love that. <clears throat> but, you know, I would, I would kind of come back and say, maybe rather than selfish, I, um, I think alumni would be remiss if they didn't um, capitalize on the UH network and the Bauer network for, you know, for those reasons, because it is a huge investment, as, as you mentioned, of time, but also of treasure. And mm-hmm. part of the decision to come to this university and this college in particular is the network that comes with that investment. You know, you're, you're essentially buying a network. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, I think it would book everyone to, to take advantage of it in that way. Absolutely. And I think I might be misquoting. We'll have to check with him. But Dr. George once at an event shared that. I think it's something close to 14 or 15% of the workforce in Houston is UH alum. It's a UH alum. So just in terms of um, the 80-20 rule, you might just want to involve, uh, dedicate some of your time to building relationships with that network because the likelihood of finding somebody in a company from the University of Houston is high if you're going to stay here. Absolutely. No, I, I've often mm-hmm. joked that you can't, um, throw a rock in this town without hitting UH alum, but I, I really right. believe it to be true. Sure. And, uh, you know, I, I think we can all be doing a much better job of kind of planting that that red and white flag, whether it's in our front yards or, um, you know, wearing it on our chest, um, just mm-hmm. that, that pride. Um, we're definitely, we're, we're getting there. I, I 100% agree with you. Um, you had kind of touched on some global tethers, you know, not only from your your home origin, um, you know, also at, at Bauer, we've got a huge global footprint, um, mm-hmm. you know, whether it's academics and study abroad or it's alumni that either return home after attending the university or um, they go there for work internationally. Uh, so you, you kind of, you, you have this spirit of altruism about you. You love giving back. Have you ever thought about what that could look like um, to kind of make your, your, um, birthplace a better place how do you how do you kind of give back in that sense are you doing that professionally with your with your work now or is it something that you've been thinking about long term I have that's a great question we've talked about it several times with different people and on the one hand it's so hard to change what's going on in that country and and everybody has tried and I'm just reading recently a, a I've started to read bios of leaders and political leaders, and it's interesting and, and stories about civilization. There's a lot of comparison from Simon Bolivar to Washington. They call him the Washington of the South and why he was or wasn't able to do what, what they did here. So that's one thing, right? Like the macro, it's so hard. And nowadays, there's a documentary where they interview the, the guy who was the number two guy when... Pablo Escobar was there in Colombia. And I think at the time he had like 90% of the drug trade of the world was going through him. So he was effectively the richest guy in the planet. And, and he tried to get into politics. And that was a big story. It's in, on every documentary about him. And they blocked him and they, for good reasons. And, and this number two guy, he's called Popeye or Popeye, he said that people would laugh at them because they wanted to build a narco state. And people would say that that's impossible. And then in the documentary it says, well, they were laughing at us now, but look at Venezuela, they did it. So just, it's a government, it's a corrupt government that has, it's being funded by oil and drugs. So to take that down, it's just so, so hard. So from that perspective, it's it's just thinking long term, okay, how is it that I can help my country? And then on the other hand, what we've been doing is we've been as much as possible doing internship programs and trying to build professionals who work in our company that are from Venezuela and trying to do everything we can. We try to sometimes internet there it's not as good. So we've tried to like, hey, can we do a satellite thing or how can we um, work to help you so we can do the work? So right now, that's what we're doing. We're trying to build um, professionals down there 
and and help them and give them work and and, and pay them in hard currency something that they can rely on that's in the short term in the long term i would definitely would want to maybe at some point for short maybe teach a course in in one of those schools or even go there maybe once in a while and do it presentially or if not i can do it online but absolutely that thank you for asking that question because um, it is something that's on my radar to be on the lookout for opportunities to to help and, and give back yeah that's great well it's, it's heartwarming to hear that and um you know i i find it's more often than not that uh, uh alumni tend to never forget where they came from they don't mm -hmm. forget their roots and um they always keep it close to the best. It's a part of their story. And whether it's an alum that grew up on the East End of downtown and uh, you know went to UH and graduated, they return and they, they serve their, their home community. So it's, it's great to hear that there's interest there on your part in doing the same. Um, so if you were to give a 30 second elevator pitch for, for kind of your current company and what you all do, um, what, what would that sound like? We help B2B leaders dominate their niche as they go to thought leader. Basically, we always tell the story of um, Tim Grover or any other thought leader that you would think about, Warren Buffett, Tony Robbins. They're not cold calling their clients, right? Like you don't see Tim Grover going up to the best athletes in the NBA. Hey, do you want to dominate the game? Do you want to be the best? No, they, the, the athletes that want to dominate, they go to him because He's worked with Michael Jordan, with Kobe Bryant, with different athletes. They know he can get it done. And through his branding efforts and his programs and his books, people know about him. Same with any other thought leader, Warren Buffett and his, his the speeches, the letters, the books, Tony Robbins and Gary Vaynerchuk, you name it, right? So that's basically on a smaller scale. That's what we do. We find leaders who are doing great things or knowledgeable what they're doing. And we basically build a media team behind them. Think about the Gary V model, but on a smaller scale. So we put videographers and content writers, designers behind them so that they can put out a um, large amount of, and a large amount of content consistently on social media so that more people learn about what they do and more people, I say that, at some point in your life, you have to increase the number of people that know you or know about you without necessarily having to increase the number of people that you know, right? You don't have to meet everybody one-on-one. -on -one. If more people can get to know about you and your brand and the value that you're creating, then you know your personal brand is growing and you can have a better impact. Of course, it has to at some point turn into revenue. All these branding efforts have to turn into cash flow because that's what keeps the business going. But I say that if people put transactions before transformation, it's not going to work. You have to first think about what's the value that you're creating for your audience, either through your content and the education that it's there, or later on when they become a client, you have, you have to be good because if not, no marketing or branding or sales efforts are going to be able to to keep uh, your business in the long term. Mm -hmm. That was a little bit more than thirty seconds, by the way. So I gotta <laughs> I gotta okay. work on 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 my pitching skills. It, it was all good substantive content. So if if um, listeners and viewers wanted to learn more about you and your work, is there a website that you have that that they could navigate to and visit? Absolutely. Latinpresarios.com. They can also find me if they put Alejandro Sanoja on Google. They'll find me and, and all the links there are either to my LinkedIn or web page. But more than that, I would invite people to get involved with this school. Um, they're going to find me. Um, anybody in Houston, get ready because they're going to they're gonna see me somewhere on some social network where we just started a podcast as well. We have videos everywhere, so they're gonna they're gonna see me. I, I, my biggest call to action would be with with the people out there from the school to get involved in something, either a mentorship program, and reach out to um, people that went through the same program as you did. Come back to hopefully, I'm hoping that that we can soon get over the pandemic and, and get back to doing events in person. It was a great event that the school did that 
I would always put it on my calendar to go and, and connect with it and be an alumni. I know the Cougar Fund has some great events, but I would, I would say that you have to at least go to one thing. If you're a U of H alum, Bauer alum, you're in Houston, put it in your to-do list once a year, attend to some kind of event, even if it's virtual, connect with someone else on LinkedIn so that we can all um, keep growing personally and professionally together. Yeah. Um, well, the way that I'd like to end uh, the podcast, at least the ones that I'm, I'm helping to host, and you saw this with the major general with the last episode, um, I think it's informative for our listeners and our viewers to know what it is that you're consuming in terms of content. So I just wanted to ask, um, you know, what, what are you currently reading through? What book are you reading? Um, what is what is to be read? What's next on your on your read list? I know that you are an avid connoisseur of um, of the written word. Well, I I wouldn't recommend my reading style to everybody. And later on, I've been thinking about reading. Same, I always um, I got to change my analogies. One friend told me because I always related to sports, but I say that with reading, it's kind of like going to the gym, right? Like you start with a with a with a bar maybe. And get in your form and then you start adding weights and, and you got to keep doing it if you want to get stronger so if you're starting i would recommend with um, something that you're curious about and a problem you want to solve but right now what i'm focused on is that big um in, i guess in a section or encyclopedia that you see right there that's a will durant's story of civilization so he has two short books that i would totally recommend one is a, a brief the brief lessons of history or something like that I think it's 100 pages it's great it just goes through economy and, and medicine and all the different areas it just gives you kind of like a summary and then the other one is the greatest minds of it and ideas of all time again 100 and so pages it recommends it 10 best thinkers 10 best poets 100 best books I read those two short and that got me interested into going into this. I think it's 11 tome. I think each book is about a thousand pages. It takes a while to read. They go into every detail, but it touches everything. Started from Sumeria and Mesopotamia and I'm currently in Greece and in, it's dense, it's difficult. But if you're at, at that point where I realized I didn't know anything about history, I know a lot about business and any business book probably that you can mention, I've read about it or read something similar, but I realized I needed to read more about history if I wanted to grow and, and keep learning, especially because this was after reading Marcus Aurelius's meditations, you realize that we're dealing basically as humans with the same problems. It's interesting, like this was written 2000 years ago and you can take notes and apply it to the problem, the majority of the fundamental problems that you're going through right now. So I think it's important to, at some point in your learning, in your reading practice, to go back to history and, and biographies. I'm big now on biographies. I think we've talked about it. I'm going through the power broker right now as well. I just read a Lincoln bio. So um, I, I'm not sure. Um, how much more time we have. We could talk hours and hours about books, but uh, I have a newsletter. If anybody is interested and wants to get book recommendations, I read about four to 10 books every month. And I write a, a newsletter at the end of the month with some of the recommendations. I try to always make sure I recommend who I think would get the most value out of it. Because I know we have only a little bit of time. There's so many books out there. So I try to make sure I make a recommendation on, on who I think it's going to get the most out of that book or who should read that book. Um, so we can, we can talk more about that some other time. If you like, I can talk hours. About sure. That, that'll be another, another complete episode. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I think it's, it's important for our alumni to, to always remember that the reading does not stop once you cross the graduation stage. It, maybe it just changes, right? You, you get to pick mm -hmm. the reading that you want to do. Um, at that point, but it's important to always be self-educating. Um, and, you know, history is our greatest um, teacher. I think it's, there's nothing mm -hmm. new under the sun. Um, I think that's, 
maybe that's from Ecclesiastes, but um, very, very true. And I don't think we, we could end on a more, um, a more perfect note uh, than that. Well, Alejandro, we appreciate your time. Um, we appreciate your time as a student, as an alum. And uh, I think we can all look forward to a day post pandemic when we can finally gather in person and, and kind of resume that, that in-person engagement. Absolutely. Thank you for having me, Giovanni. Thank you, Akil, for your help with, with getting everything set up. And like I always say, anytime you need anything related to Bauer, uh, count on me. I'll be there to, to help with anything I can. Thank you for listening to today's episode of the Working Wisdom Podcast Series from the C.T. Bauer College of Business, brought to you by the Inclusive Leadership Initiative. The initiative aims to develop inclusive leaders and family-friendly cultures that support business strategy and superior business performance. For more information about Bauer and this podcast series, visit www.bauer.uh.edu slash podcast.